forgive and receive. We all know that. We heard that from our moms growing up. And we know that giving warms our hearts. And at this time of year, we're kind of bombarded with requests. It's so busy during the holiday season. And we really want to give to the needy, as well as all of things we want to do for our families. So I thought today I would talk about four tips on being charitable. I'll give you the TTT in a minute, but we can still partner with the IRS. We're going to talk about giving bigger and then maybe giving smaller in a really big way. And I'm not going to be using the word of the day because I have no idea what it means. And I don't think I'm going to it, but hopefully we'll give you some other really good things. So let's start with the TTT. Do you write a check to a charity? Is that what you're doing? That's really great. This year, maybe you don't have the ability to write a check, but you can also give of your time and your talent as well as your treasure. When you give of your time and your talent, you really make a connection with a charity. When my kids were little, we did something really special that really made an impact on their life. And that over, I don't remember if it was Christmas or for Thanksgiving, but we gave to a needy family, which a lot of you guys probably do, but we actually went to the grocery store and bought the whole dinner, all the makings for a dinner, as well as things that the family might need, like diapers or things like that. And then we schlepped it to the family's house. And so my kids got to directly connect with people they were helping. which really made a difference in our family. And these days, it seems like I just write a, write a check to different charities. Like I haven't been doing the fun run or those kinds of things. But I think when we make some kind of a connection, especially if you're not able to write that check, that can make a big difference. So if that's not something that you're doing now, you don't have to do it this month. But you can think about doing it throughout the year. Maybe that's something new, um, doing it like a volunteer within the charity that interests you. And when you do that, make sure to connect with your best friend, the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> nothing to do with emails, but um, anyway. But think about when you are doing anything charitable that you can get a benefit back because you do receive when you give. You can deduct your gifts. So if you do write a check, then if it's less than $250, then you can just use a cancel check. Or if you donate online, you can just use your bank statement for the IRS. If it's over $250, you need to receive. Whenever you're gifting property, like to the Christian Center, you want to get a receipt of what you gave. So it's important, then you can, if you, if you do the file the long form, you can write that off. So if you're in a 25% federal bracket and a 5% state, then you get 30% back. So that's always nice. So keep records. Did you guys know you can deduct your mileage? A friend of mine, for charitable miles, so a friend of mine, they do the, the, they mow the lawn for the nuns at the Carmelite Monastery. I don't know where that is, but it's like an hour away. <laughs> so they actually could, could keep track of those charitable miles, and you can write those off on your taxes. If you've made a killing in the last five years in the stock market, you can donate appreciated stock, and then you don't have to pay capital gains on it. The charity is a charity, so they don't pay taxes. So the IRS can help you give a little bit more or get the ability to, to uh, save a little bit on your taxes. Just make sure that the charity is a 501c3. And the IRS actually has a link that you can search for your charity to make sure it is a charitable organization. So along those lines, you can give and get a lot back. But I always talk to my clients about thinking bigger. You and your family may be able to do some things that you haven't really thought about. You don't have to be a Rockefeller or a, or a Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates, to, to see yourself as a philanthropist. I had a former client who had an IRA, and she gave a portion of her IRA to her private school, because she just loved her private school. And I actually, she passed away, and I actually got to go and talk with the school and give them the check, and that was pretty exciting. You can also go, go bigger. If you have, a, you have a rental property, or you have appreciated stock, you could do something like a charitable remainder trust. And that way, you, when you kind of do the numbers, you almost get back as much in, in 
tax deductions and income that you, as you give, but you also get to give big to a charity. So think big, and when you're looking at your financial strategies, something like a charitable or major trust might be in your, in your picture. You can also think smaller, but thinking smaller in a, in a big way. Sometimes a small thing makes a big difference. Our blessed Mother Teresa, which all of us know, she, she talked about not everybody's great, but she was very, very humble. She didn't see herself as a really great, big person, but she did so much because she figured, let me help one person at a time. So she said, we can do, maybe we can't do great things, but we can do small things with great love. So think about there might be someone that's it's not a, a, an actual charity, but there might be someone in need that you could help this season by just being a friend. There might be someone who has their hands full. <laughs> and I used, I found this picture, I used this slide particularly because my friend, my best friend Diane from California, she has always been a really charitable person and what she did is instead of giving to uh, or working at a food bank. She helped a mom, her next door neighbor, with twins. Her next door neighbor had twins and obviously was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with when I had one. So what Diane did is she volunteered four hours a week. And so she just came in and let the poor lady take a shower. <laughs> or she went to the grocery store. Or just anything she wanted. Okay, I'm here. What do you need? Laundry folded? What do you need? And think about the massive impact on that one person that Diane made. And it's a ripple effect because it inspired me and I'm talking about it today. So you can do big things that are really small things. And you, that's not a write-off for the IRS, but it can have really big benefits. So give often. So when you think about philanthropy and you think about charity, just relax. You can start to it throughout the year. Maybe it's just in your good deed of the day. Or maybe it's a good deed of the week or a good deed of the month, but it doesn't always have to be in December. It is better to give than receive, but we sure get a lot back, don't we, from when we're giving. So think about that throughout the year, and hopefully this inspires you to do something a little, maybe something, try something new, do something a little bit different with your charity and your philanthropy and enjoy your holiday season. You can follow me on Forbes.com for more. This is an article I just posted on Sunday. So if you want to hear more um, on financial tips like this, go to Forbes.com. You can just search Nancy Anderson, but the site's up there too. Thank you so much.